Welcome to this lesson on unit conversion. Um, I want to start just by reviewing a quick rule from operating with dimensions. And in particular, uh, you can remember that we said quantities have to have identical dimensions if you want to add, subtract, or compare them with an equal sign. Okay? So if they don't have the same dimensions, you can't do those things to them. It's like how we said there's no such calculation as three oranges plus seven kilometers, right? It doesn't make sense. Now, if quantities do have the same dimensions, we want to typically cast those quantities in the same units, right? So just to make this concrete, we could ask the question, does two inches equal 5.08 centimeters, right? And that is a dimensionally legal question because inches and centimeters are both lengths. They both have dimensions of length. And we can ask this question, even though the number two does not equal the number 5.08, it's possible that two inches does equal 5.08 centimeters. In fact, it does turn out that that is true. It would be easier to assess that statement if we converted one of the sides of this equation to a different set of units so that we had inches and inches or centimeters and centimeters. Okay, another very simple example, we can write one hour plus seven minutes. This is dimensionally legal because these are both measures of time. They're both the dimensions of time. Now, if you want to simplify that expression, it helps to cast them in the same set of units. So we can take one hour and write it in terms of minutes. And then we have 60 minutes plus seven minutes is 67 minutes. And that's really what we're going to be talking about today, uh, or for this uh, screencast, is um, unit conversion. Unity is just another word for one, and a fraction is equal to unity if the numerator and denominator are the same. Now, here are some examples of unity that you might not be used to seeing. Something like one inch over 2.54 centimeters. Even though one and 2.54 are not the same number, one inch is the same as 2.54 centimeters. So this fraction is a representation of unity. The thing in the numerator and the thing in the denominator are the same thing. Similarly, 86,400 seconds in a day, or one mile per hour being the same as 0.447 meters per second. And these versions of unity, these fractions, that have something in the numerator and the denominator that are the same but written in different unit systems, these are called the unit conversion factors. Now, in order to do unit conversion, to convert the units of the quantity, we simply multiply it by unit conversion factors until we achieve the units we want. So we'll do a couple of examples here. We would like to convert 30 miles per hour to kilometers per day. So here we have 30 miles per hour. You think way down the road, we're trying to get to kilometers per day. So we're gonna have to cancel out miles and replace it with kilometers. We're gonna have to cancel out hours and replace it with days. And here's how we do it. So we're gonna multiply by 1.6 kilometers per mile. This has the effect of canceling out miles. This here, this is a unit conversion factor. We'll multiply by another unit conversion factor that you know off the top of your head. This is 24 hours per day. So now we have hours canceling, we have miles canceling, um, and what we're left with is uh, 30 times 1.6 divided by 1 kilometers per day. And that turns out to equal 1152, 1152 kilometers per day. Here's another example. Um, convert one cubic inch to liters. And it might help to know that one liter is the same as 1,000 cubic centimeters. So we start with our one cubic inch here, one inch cubed. And we want to start by converting that into cent cubic centimeters. We know there's 2.54 centimeters in one inch. If you don't know that, you can look it up in many standard places. But we want to cancel out cubic inches. So I'm going to take this unit conversion factor and I'm going to cube it. Here's the cube factor. So that will have inches cubed canceling out inches cubed here. Okay, that'll give us a quantity that's in terms of cubic centimeters. Then we can multiply by one liter per thousand cubic centimeters. So these cubic centimeters and these cubic centimeters cancel, these cubic inches and these cubic inches cancel. We're left with one times 2.54 cubed divided by one cubed divided by 1,000 liters. And if you plug all those numbers together, you get about 0.016 liters. Now, in case you think this is boring, I know how to convert units, I want to point out that some problems can be solved simply by combining or canceling units. So we'll do a couple of examples here. How much energy is required to run a 100 watt light bulb for one day? 
In case you uh, don't recall, watts here, the capital W, are a measure of power. And power is energy per time. So one watt turns out to mean one joule per second, where joules, which we can represent with a capital J, are a measure of energy. So watts are energy per time. And we want to know how much energy is used up by a 100 watt light bulb running for one day. So I'm going to start out with our 100 watts, or 100 joules per second. And we're going to multiply by 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day. So let's see where we've gotten to so far. We can cancel out seconds, minutes, and hours. So this is going to give me some number of joules per day. I want to know the number of joules in one day, so I'm simply going to multiply by one day. So the seconds are gone, the minutes are gone, the hours are gone. The days are gone, and I'm going to end up with a number of joules. That's 100 times 60 times 60 times 24. And that number turns out to be about 8.64 times 10 to the 6th joules. Uh, now, a second example assumes sunlight deposits energy at 250 watts per cubic, uh, sorry, per square meter on a 10 square meter garden. How much energy is deposited over a month? So what you should be imagining here, right, is here's a garden. It's 10 square meters in area, and the sun is up here, and the sun is shining down on it. That deposits some energy, and we want to know how much energy over an entire month, okay? So we start out with our 250 watts, that's 250 joules per second, per meter squared. And we want to get to a value of joules, because joules are energy. So we're going to multiply by 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, 30 days in a month, and we're asking about a period of one month. So what does this do for us? Seconds will cancel, minutes will cancel, hours, days, and months. And if we do this, what we will end up with is some value of joules per meter squared. Those are the units that are left. We want to get to joules. We know we have 10 square meters for our garden. So we're going to multiply by our 10 square meters. And now all the units cancel out, right? So just to check. We have seconds gone, we have minutes, we have hours, we have days, we have months, we have square meters. We're left with some number of joules. If you multiply all those numbers together, it's 6.5 times 10 to the ninth joules deposited on that garden over the span of a month. So that's the end of this lesson. I want to ask yourself if you can identify and construct unit conversion factors, if you can use those conversion factors to convert between units, and if you can solve simple problems involving unit cancellation, just like we did on the previous slide. Thanks for listening.